Hey, what's up guys? Eddie here as DJ11 from J8 Music Studios. Today we're looking at the infamous trance lead. This is not a hard timbre to program, but there are a lot of subtle changes you can make to get a lot of variation. Today we're going to do it in Spire, so let's get to it. Now what does a trance lead consist of? Well, generally it consists of a medium amp envelope, a filter cut off with a low pass filter, lots of harmonics, either saw, pulse or squares, generally saws or pulses, probably not squares, and some noise. Now this being a virtual synthesizer, there'll be a lot of people out there saying how it just doesn't compare to the analog world, and that might be the case, but that doesn't mean we can't get a really solid sound out of this. So let's give it a crack. First things first, I've got this translate here. Here is the MIDI for it. It is in the key of A minor, nice and simple. And it's playing in contrast to the pad melody I came up with in the Pulse Width Modulation video. Check that one out in the description below. And here is the canonic for it. It's just done in Massive and sounds like this. And we should. And that's playing in contrast to the pad. Now this pad and this canonic create a really nice base for a translate to sit on top of. Stick with the traditional seven voices. What I like to do is increase the decay until I hear the pluck information that I like. Okay, so that is just about right for this sound. Now notice that this sound, it isn't one of those sounds that has a transient every 16th can come up with something like. But everybody does that, that's a bit boring. I wanna leave some space for other elements. I'm gonna have a counter melody going against this melody. And it's probably going to be a lot of delayed reverb too. So I want to have space for that kind of thing. So that's why I've got a bit of a longer release here. The more transients you have, the shorter the sustain, the shorter the release. As a general rule of thumb, uh, always do it to taste within your track. important thing I forgot to mention. A forgotten technique is to detune the fine tune. It's easier to tell without all of those voices. Put all of them back. Beautiful sound. Now I'll create one more. That's going to go up the guts. No widening on this one. Stick it on. Yeah, let's go with seven. Okay, so the key with these three oscillators, if we keep an eye on the detune knob, they're all slightly different. Number one is wide, number two is wide, number three is straight up the guts, and that's creating a lot of solid mono compatibility and a lot of punch to the sound. And then the fourth one, we're gonna make a noise oscillator. The key is to play it till it's too loud, identify the noise frequencies that blend in well with the saws, and then back off on the volume until you can barely hear it. But if you take it away, it's missing. sounding quite good. Let's just uh, take that away and notice the difference. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that makes a big difference. Subtle thing, a big difference. Okay, let's introduce a filter. Uh, I don't want to go too steep. In fact, there was a nice one for this. I'm not sure if it's at the virus simulation. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what emulation this is supposed to be. Okay, so that's sounding really good, really nice and tight. That envelope. Uh, the key to setting the decay envelope. Well, some people say it should be as long or shorter than the amp decay envelope. I think it really just use your ears. There's no hard and fast rules, but generally it will be similar for this kind of lead. Uh, one thing I haven't shown you so far is that you're able to manipulate the gradient or the slope of the decay slope, that being exponential, semi-linear, but parabolic, and that being inversely exponential. Generally, the faster the track, if you're getting up in the 140s, uh, you want to have something that is parabolic. On the amp envelope, we can have more linear there if we want to, but it depends on how tight, once again, you want the sound to be. I personally feel that for this lead, with these amount of transients, on the amp envelope, that kind of slope works well, and on the filter envelope, uh, having it as steep as possible Inspire works really well. So let's add a bit of compression. And some chorus. It is always worth a try. Okay, it's a bit better there. I might just keep it there for now. Okay, there's no hard and fast rules about having chorus, but I think. And now we set the delay times. So that is a pretty solid bass. Let's add a little, little bit of EQ. The Spire EQ is incredibly powerful. That's sounding pretty solid. Set that to modulate on a mod wheel. As you can see, the mod wheel move. But that is your basic trance saw wave. Now, these type of leads can always be laid to achieve a lot more power and punch in the transient. They need to be laid carefully. So let's have a crack at that.
that note here isn't quite working for me. Okay, so for this lead, I'm gonna layer it with another instance of Spire. And what I'm looking for with this lead, I'm not doing this for the sake of it. What is that sound? That is absolute pus for real sound. What I'm looking for with this sound is to have a bit more punch. This is a really nice basis. It's The envelopes do need a bit of tweaking. Reverb and the delay need to be tweaked as well to get them just right. Probably best to do all of that tweaking with your kick in the bass so you get it sounding absolutely schmick. We haven't got that at this stage. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you how to lay a trance lead that works really well. Now, one of the main keys to layering effectively is having a different amp envelope. Now, this one here, I'm going to turn off the delays. See, that one doesn't have as much impact because the tail is kind of almost overlapping each note. And that's kind of the way I wanted it for this track. But for this one, I think it will layer really effectively if you have a slightly slower attack than this one. So it's not quite as snappy, but a much lower sustain. Almost could even go with no decay. So I think that's sounding you right. You hear just how different that amp envelope is. So this one, oscillator three, I've set an octave higher and same sort of principle with the noise, introduce it until it's too much and then back it off. So it's there, but if you take it away, you notice that it's not. The fourth one, you could do something similar with an octave down. that there for now. 
Uh, you could kind of automate that in and out when the kick and base are in, you wouldn't need something that low. Uh, but when it's not there and it's, and it's during the breakdown, or if it's just the leads playing, you can have that in there and it will fill out the sound nicely. settings. Basically guys, I've synced up the effects to be exactly the same, just so I could have production version of consonants, not a harmonic version of consonants. Uh, between the synthesizers, I don't want different choruses. As far as layering goes, I'm just gonna play this through a couple of times and I'm gonna turn the layer on and off. And I just want you to listen to the difference in power and clarity to the lead. so many ways to do transleads and there are so little so many variations you can do but the key concepts to apply to achieve this sound in any synthesizer is sound wave with lots of harmonics generally saw or pulse waves or a mixture of the two medium amp attack with a release to suit the transient information set the filter to have the desired transient energy lots of delay lots of reverb and possibly some chorus let me know what you think of this lead in the comments let me know if you've used this technique if you've been successful or unsuccessful or if you prefer another synth and maybe we can cover that one all right guys happy music making <laughs>